In this video, I will describe and give examples of the following types of movements, flexion, extension, abduction, adduction, pronation, supination, rotation, dorsiflexion, plantar flexion, protraction, retraction, elevation, and depression. Flexion and extension are movements through the sagittal plane. If the body starts in anatomical position, flexion will move the upper limb superiorly and anteriorly through the sagittal plane. So here we can see flexion occurring at the the shoulder joint, so the joint commonly known as the shoulder joint, is also known as the glenohumeral joint, and flexion at the glenohumeral joint is raising the brachial region, raising the humerus from, an, from the anatomical position through the sagittal plane. So the opposite movement extension would return the humerus back to anatomical position. So the other example of flexion and extension that we can see in this illustration is motion at the tibiofemoral joint, which is commonly referred to as the knee joint. So flexion of the tibia at the tibiofemoral joint is starting from anatomical position, lifting the tibia posteriorly and superiorly. And then extension would be to return the tibia back to anatomical position. Another example we can see here of flexion and extension is the movement at the neck, the joints of the cervical region. So to flex the head, you are moving from anatomical position anteriorly and inferiorly through the sagittal plane. And then extension would bring the head back up straight to anatomical position. And then if you were to move further in that direction past the anatomical position, you would start to hyperextend as you tilt the head backwards. We can see the movements of the vertebral column in, in D here. So flexion of the vertebral column is the motion you would do if you were laying down and doing a sit-up or if you're in anatomical position and you are to bend over through the sagittal plane, that's flexion of the vertebral column. And then standing back up straight into anatomical position would be extension or if you were doing a sit-up, the sit-up is flexion and then when you lay back down, that would be extension. In figure E, we can see the actions of abduction and adduction. Now, sometimes I will say abduction to make it clear that the word abduction is spelled with a B because it can sound quite similar to adduction that's spelled with a D. So abduction, abduction is moving through the coronal plane away from anatomical position, drawing the humerus laterally at the glenohumeral joint, the shoulder joint, is abduction. So abduction of the humerus at the glenohumeral joint abduction of the 
arm at the shoulder is the motion that we see here where the humerus is drawn superiorly and laterally away from anatomical position through the coronal or frontal plane. And then the opposite action, returning to anatomical position, moving through the frontal plane, is adduction. And so a mnemonic that helps me remember the difference between abduction and adduction is that abduction means to take away. So for example, if you were abducted by aliens, they took you away. And then adduction is to add back. So abduction takes away, adduction adds back, returning to anatomical position. So next we'll look at rotation. So in figure F here, you can see rotation of the head, if you move the head to the right or the left, you're rotating the articulation between atlas and axis. The atlato-axial joint enables rotation. It's a joint that allows you to pivot your head to the right or to the left. So similarly, you could rotate the lower limb at the acetabulofemoral joint, commonly known as the hip joint. So lateral rotation of the acetabulofemoral joint is to rotate away from the midline so that if you lateral rotate the acetabulofemoral joint, the entire lower limb will turn where the patella will now face away from the midline out laterally and the toes will now point out laterally. And then to return towards anatomical position would be medial rotation. So medial rotation would, if you start in anatomical position and you medial rotate the lower limb, that will cause the patella to point towards the midline and the toes will point towards the midline. So pronation and supination are terms that I will only use to discuss motion at the proximal radio ulnar joint. So if we start off in anatomical position with the palms facing forward, with the palmar region facing anteriorly, the, the motion that turns the radius as well as the manual region so that the palm will then face posteriorly. That's what we call pronation. And so when you're in anatomical position with the palms facing forward, the joint is in the supinated position. So supination returns to anatomical position and pronation will cause the radius to roll over the ulna and brings the manual region with it, causing the palm to turn over to the other direction. So next in illustration H here, we see the actions of dorsiflexion and plantar flexion. So dorsiflexion and plantar flexion are actions at the talocrural joint, commonly known as the ankle joint, the talocrural joint. 
can perform dorsiflexion. So dorsiflexion of the talocrural joint will raise the pedal re region, ra raise the pedal digits superiorly. So raising the toes superiorly, pushing the dorsal aspect of the foot, the dorsal aspect of the pedal region superiorly. That's dorsiflexion. So you can see that's where the word dorsiflexion comes from, the dorsi referring to the dorsal aspect of the pedal region, meaning that the top, the superior surface of the foot. And the plantar surface of the pedal region is the, the bottom of the foot. So the action of plantar flexion, plantar flexion will push the plantar region inferiorly and posteriorly. And so if you're pushing down on the gas pedal, you're performing plantar flexion. And to raise your foot off of the gas pedal, you're performing dorsiflexion. So next we see actions of protraction and retraction. So protraction means to move horizontally in the anterior direction. So to push the chin forward would be protraction of the mandible. And then pulling the chin back posteriorly is retraction of the mandible. And so next we see the example of elevation and depression. So elevation means to raise vertically in the superior direction. So we can see the action of elevation of the mandible. Elevation of the mandible is closing the jaw. And so to open the jaw, that's the action of depression. To lower the jaw inferiorly, depression of the mandible. So depression of the mandible opens the mouth, opens the jaw, and elevation of the mandible closes the jaw to take a bite 